Hi everyone, welcome to our grounded flow class today. Today we'll be drawing on the earth element as a bit of an inspiration for helping to uh, gain a sense of calm, a sense of contentment, and of course a sense of grounding. So let's get started. We're going to start in Balasana or child's pose. So take a nice wide legged child's pose, reaching those arms out in front and resting the forehead onto the earth or perhaps onto a block. And whilst you're settling in here, see if you can try and consciously become aware of all of the points of your body that are touching the earth. So the tops of your feet, your shins, your knees, the hands and the finger pads. That's the webbing in between the thumb and the finger, first finger. So you concentrate on the sensory feeling, I guess, of the, of the floor against your skin. And use that as a bit of a hook to leave behind whatever it is that you were doing before you've come to practice this morning and anything that's still yet to come in your day. A couple of nice big breaths here. Ready, slowly creeping up. It's in interesting just how easy it is for us to become um, the opposite of grounded. You know, for us to start already, even in, the, in our practice, to think about what's to come next, or perhaps you know a, um, a distraction that's happening right now. And let's so let's really try and use this asana and this pranayama just as tools to help us as best as we can get that sense of grounding. So before we move into a little bit more movement with the body, we're going to concentrate in on the breath for a moment. So we're going to do some three chamber breathing. Often when we're a bit stressed or anxious, we tend to breathe into the top portion of our body. So into just the chest, quite shallow breaths. So we're just going to take a moment to actively breathe into all three chambers. So in a minute, when you start inhaling, I'll get you to try and concentrate on filling up through the belly, then the rib cage, diaphragm area, and then finally the chest, and as you exhale, working in the inverse, so releasing first the air through the chest, diaphragm, and finally through the belly. And you may even like, as we're breathing, to utilize your hand as a bit of a, a reminder or a physical cue for you. So to do our three chamber breath, we're going to sit into a toe sit. If that's not comfortable for you, you could just rest straight back onto your heels. Otherwise, tuck those toes under, and coming on back into your toe sit, rest your hands wherever feels comfortable. So either on your um, thighs, you might like to have them in a Charlie Mudra. I'm going to start with mine on my tummy. And let's take a nice big inhale together. And exhale. All right, let's consciously start bringing those breaths, breaths through the uh, three chambers. That was a bit of a tongue twister. Okay, on your next inhale, feel the tummy expand, the rib cage and the chest. And as you exhale, release the oxygen out through the chest, rib cage and tummy. Let's keep going. So tummy, rib cage, chest, and then we release in the opposite direction. So keep going with your three chamber breathing there. It's funny, as I mentioned before, when we are anxious or stressed, um, you might try and become consciously aware of catching yourself breathing in a shallow way. So even if you don't have time for a full yoga practice, just taking 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes to practice some three chamber breathing really consciously can be a beautiful way to help ground and settle ourselves, particularly at this time of the year with Christmas and everything coming up. Um, a really lovely practice just to integrate at any time throughout our day. Okay, a couple of more rounds here. As I mentioned, our practice today is associated with the earth element. So we're looking at grounding, and that's all always connected to our, our first chakra, our root chakra, um, our muladhara chakra. 
So physically, we're looking at the area of the body that's, that's close to um, the root chakra here. So we'll be working a little bit through the glutes, the hips, the groin area, trying to bring both a sense of openness, but also some strength as well. Um, so hopefully as a result of that, we'll start to all feel really nice and grounded when we finish the practice. And that's um, some sensations that we can take with us off the mat. Okay, one more round here. Coming up out of that toe sit, and you might like to just lightly tap the tops of the feet on the ground, just releasing that sensation a little bit. Okay, let's pop on down onto our uh, backs. Do a little bit of floor work here before we start some standing um, asana. So we're first going to take reverse pigeon. So um, we're going to open up, as I said, through the hip and groin area. Uh, I'll give you a few different options here. So you choose whichever is most comfortable for you today and it could even depend on what time of the day it is that you're practicing. So anyway, all of us are going to start on our, um, on our backs. Okay, slowly rest on down here. Soles of the feet are resting on the floor. We're going to lift up this right leg. We're going to bring it into a figure four position over the left, slowly flexing through that right foot. So three options here. You can either take this right hand and really gently, but um, with some purpose, open up through the leg and the hip there. You might like to reach through and grab either the back of the thigh or the back of the shin. So choose whichever one you'd like and then come and nestle back down. You could even place a block under the head if that was um, helpful for you. So anything to make this feel challenging or I guess uh, feel a stretch through that hip and um, glute area, but it shouldn't um, bring about additional uh, contraction or you know, tense um, feelings anywhere else in our body. That's what props are for. So if you, if you would benefit from one now, please feel free to grab it. Beautiful deep breaths here. Feeling whatever it is that you've had on your mind slowly start to drop away as we narrow our focus in just to the area of the mat for the time being. And on your next exhale, resting that left sole of the foot down. We're just going to swap sides. We're actually going to work through um, this figure four variation a fair bit today. It's a really nice one for opening up through the, the hips and glute area. So are you trying to maintain that beautiful deep breathing right down into your tummy, filling up the body with all that lovely goodness and using the breath as a tool to maintain the focus of our minds as well. Make sure you're not gripping through any other parts of the body, the forehead and the neck. Gorgeous. One more deep breath here and exhale. Let's come on out. So we're going to start to strengthen a little bit now through those glutes. So I'm going to do a little bit of more, um, again, motions with the figure four and then also some um, activations through the glute muscles before we move on into some standing poses. So rest on back for me. Once again, we're going to take a figure four. So the right uh, leg is going to come over the left, flexing that right foot. We're going to come up when you're ready into a figure four. Uh, glute raise, so pushing up through the sole of that left foot and holding into that lovely glute raise here. Three more breaths. See if you can push out through the left big toe. Coming on down. Now we're all 
rolling over to your left hand side, extending the arm forward. And we're going to do some nice clams here. So just opening up, the feet should remain touching. And you're just opening up to a point where you can feel some activation in the glutes. So if you go too far, you won't get that. So just four nice clams, as we call them, here. And let's come back on over. I'm going to go into that glute raise again. For this time, we're going to do two, and we'll do them a little bit more dy dynamically. So up we come, holding on at the top, releasing on down, and one more, pushing right on up, and back down. So we're going to do eight clams. Start to feel that. It's a very simple movement, but you should be able to feel that activation through the right glute, particularly here. You might like to rest your head down. Working through until you've done your eight clams. And then we're going to come on back down. This time, three glute raises on this side. Holding it up the top, release down through the right leg, elevate through those hips and then roll on down. Gorgeous. Other side now. So exactly the same thing. Um, your left foot is coming up and over the right, elevating this time for the first one. A bit of a longer hold. Again, check in with the right foot. Is the, is the heel grounding down? Can you spread those toes and use them as a bit of leverage to gain us a little bit, a little bit more height? Feel that strengthening into the right glute, but maybe a stretch and an openness coming into the left. Coming up, back on down. This time, rolling over to the right hand side for our clam. We'll be doing our three clams, sorry, our four clams using the left leg. I'm not going to do that because my microphone's in the way. But go ahead, same motion as the other side really making sure that you're feeling into that sweet spot where you're getting that lovely activation through the left glute. All right, once you've done those three, pop back on over. I'm going to do those um, figure four glute bridges again. This time really pushing up through two beautiful glute bridges here. Rolling over onto your right hand side for your clams. So this time those eight clams for me, please. And when you're ready, coming back on over and working in to um, final three glute bridges. So coming up with the um, figure four position, three little pulses, and then slowly coming back on out of your bridge. Okay, when you're ready, come up and join me a kneeling position here. So hopefully you're already starting to feel a little bit of nice opening and strength, strengthening in through the glutes there, which is lovely. All right, I'm gonna move into some standing sequences now. So I just wanted to mention the earth element or the earth uh, chakra, the Muladhara chakra is associated with the color red. So um, in conjunction with thinking about that really beautiful three chamber breathing, you might also want to use a visual cue as, uh, um, as you breathe. So looking at that beautiful red color coming in, uh, moving through your body and then exiting on the exhale. If that's helpful for you to, to main a focus on a sense of grounding, please um, employ that as we move through the practice. Okay, we're gonna move straight into downward facing dog now. So coming on into your dog, do whatever you need to do to get comfy. So pedaling on out, through those legs, maybe quite slowly at first, making sure you've got that lovely external rotation through the arm bones. Oh, maybe a nice deep bend in the knees, just to stretch it right out oh, until we come slowly in to find our more traditional expression of our down dog. All right, let's move into some figure four action once more. So you're going to bring your right um, foot up. And we're going to figure four that right leg over a slightly bent left leg, extending on out 
through the arms and up through the sit bones. A couple of really deep breaths here. Feel that lovely stretch as you begin to straighten out the left leg. When you're ready, start to hug your right knee into the core. Come up onto the ball of the left foot and step nicely through to the top of your mat into a crescent lunge. Feel the grounding, even though we're standing, it's a really grounding pose, crescent lunge. So feel that grounding through the hips, down to the earth. Simply coming back into downward dog and moving straight over to the other side. So the left is figure fouring over the right. Now at any stage as we step back to downward dog, if you prefer to go through some chaturangas, upward facing dog, please add it in. So that's quite a gentle grounding flow. Um, but if that's what you'd like to add in today, by all means. Okay, let's step on up to the front with that left foot this time into our crescent lunge. Lovely this pose as we're grounding down through our legs, through our root chakra, but we're reaching on up to the sky at the same time. Beautiful, stepping back to down facing dog, lovely. Let's go through that a little bit more quickly again on each side. So squeezing on in, stepping forward, up to the crescent lunge, but this time maybe take a, a nice cactus bend as you shine your heart up towards the sky. Back to downward facing dog, straight onto the other side. Squeezing on in, crescent lunge. And a nice heart opener on the left as well. Gorgeous. Okay, let's step back. Downward facing dog, we're going to add on a little bit more here. So right leg comes over the left once more. We squeeze on up, stepping through into our crescent lunge pose. Let's open up into warrior one, reaching on forward there. Feel that lovely grounding down through the outside edge of the left foot. Okay, back into crescent and bringing the hands to Anjali Mudra at the center of the heart. We're going to step that left foot in. So slowly step it in and then bring the left foot, uh, left knee, I'm sorry, up in towards your chest. Let's hook into a figure four here and coming into a standing figure four pose at the front of the mat. So bend through that right knee quite deeply. Gorgeous, okay, coming on up. Stepping straight back into our crescent, but this time we're gonna twist on over. And back into downward facing dog. All right, let's move on to the other side. So figure fouring it again. And coming through into our crescent. And out into our lovely warrior one pose. It's a funny thing, balance, isn't it? It's one of those things that no matter how long you've been doing yoga or, you know, it, it can vary so greatly from day to day. Back into crescent lunge. Hands on Jali Mudra at the center of the heart. Stepping on through, and this time bringing that right leg over into our standing figure four. Okay, let's slowly step back into our crescent, twisting this time to the left. Push those palms together and so you can get that extra rotation there. Coming back and stepping back to downward facing dog. A couple of breaths here, just now still down dog for a second. All right, let's do that again. So um, this time the right leg is crossing on over. I'm gonna pull in. Step through, beautiful crescent, moving quite quickly back into our warrior one. This time 
time we're going to add on, so opening out into warrior two. Putting that lovely grounding through this beautiful pose. Flip it and reverse it. And coming back to warrior two. Okay, we're going to come straight back into our crescent and bring the arms into our Mjali Mudra at the centre of the heart. Stepping on up to our standing figure four. Gorgeous. Back in to crescent. And a lovely twist here. Let's strength through the left leg. So try to keep um, that one, you know, real, some real awareness there into that left leg. Stepping back into downward facing dog. Left leg, figure fours over the right. We squeeze on through. Up into our crescent. And straight into warrior one. Gorgeous. Let's open up into that lovely warrior two pose. Apologies that I have my back to you. And reversing it for that lovely side stretch. Warrior two. Straight back into our crescent lunge. And stepping on forward. Okay, back into crescent and our lovely twist to the left. Okay, come straight back into your downward facing dog. And then release the legs down once more into that beautiful wide legged child's pose. Just coming on up. So we continue to work through that groin area, really getting some nice grounding, but also some opening through that as well. So we're going to come into yogic squat, malasana pose. If you um, need some props here, you could always place a block or two under your seat and just sit straight onto the block. Um, you're still going to get that lovely opening through the groin. Otherwise, coming with me. So reasonably wide stance in the legs, feet are going outwards, not quite at a 45 degree angle, although if you need to go to 45 degree angle that's fine, um, but definitely not, not parallel. Okay, beautiful big arm circle here, down into Anjali Mudra and we're just going to come all the way down into our yogic squat, making sure we're keeping those heels grounded and feeling that beautiful release down through the groin. You can do whatever you like with your hands here. But I do like this Anjali Mudra position using the elbows as a bit of a, a lever or a tool to kind of press out against the knees. Three more breaths. And when you're ready on your next exhale, Coming on up. Nice big arm circle once more. Come into goddess pose now. So very similar, but a standing version of our uh, lovely yoga, yogic squat. You might want to slightly widen the stance, but maintain that, um, you know, 45 degree-ish uh, position of the legs. As you bend down here, really make sure that your knees are tracking on over in the same trajectory as the feet, okay? Ready? Beautiful. Big circle. And coming on down. Once more, you could do whatever you like with your hands. So Anjali, you could cactus the arms, you could even reach them skyward. Whatever works for you. I just, I'm in the mood. My body's telling me to uh, bring them into Anjali Mudra, so that's what I'm going to do. 
This is Utkata Konasana, Goddess Pose. So it's obviously bringing a nice yin energy, but um, really grounding feminine energy that I guess um, is the energy of Mother Earth, isn't it? So enjoy it. Close down the eyes if that's comfortable for you. Another couple of breaths here. Coming on up. Beautiful, bit of a wiggle through those legs if you like. Okay, coming into a nice forward fold. So I'm going to slightly pigeon toe those feet now. So turning them in slightly. One more big, beautiful arm circle as we dive on forward. You might like to rest your hands on the earth or you could interlace them behind your back and reach up and over. Forward folds are really such grounding and restorative poses. A little bit like the three chamber breathing. You know, if you have a, a moment in your day where you're feeling a little bit all over the place, a little bit anxious, a little bit ungrounded, Grab a minute or two and come into a forward fold. Try to be aware of what's happening with the muscles that you're not using. What's happening through the muscles of the head, the face, what about the tongue? Can you relax everywhere through that region of the body? Beautiful, slowly bringing the hands to the hips and coming back on up. Lovely, let's make our way back down to the floor once more. Again, working through that um, groin and hip area. So we're gonna come into Padakanasana, butterfly pose. So the feet are reasonably close to the groin. Um, and we're going to take just a standard variation where we uh, almost like, um, not, you know, fan out, I guess, is the expression of the, of the toes to just help us get some length. So we're um, raising on up through the spine and slowly bending on forwards. Try and feel those knees grounding down to the earth, but don't put pressure on them to get there. If you are um, experiencing a lot of tightness through this region of the body, you could even get a couple of blocks, big books, anything like that, and place them under your knees just to give you a little bit of extra support. I'm obsessed with props at the moment. I think sometimes, you know, they're just really beautiful ways to allow us to experience different sensations in poses that we have done many times before. Relax on down through that neck, give it a bit of a wobble. Beautiful, slowly coming on up as you're ready. Give it a little bit of a release on out through those legs. Okay, not quite done with our figure fours yet. We're actually going to come into an inversion using the figure four at the wall. So if you don't have a wall handy, um, you could just come into a, a normal shoulder stand or you could even just place a block under your sacrum, laying back onto the ground, place a block under your sacrum and raise those legs up into the sky. So that's your option. Otherwise, you're gonna come with me to the wall. So we're gonna move our mats a little bit closer to the wall. Um, so I'll give you a moment to do that as I also rearrange myself here. And we're actually going to, um, to use the wall as a prop in and of itself to do a figure four legs up the wall inversion. 
So we're going to come in just to a normal uh, legs up the wall posture first and then we'll work with that figure four shape. Okay, so bring your seat quite close to the wall and as you rest on down, shimmy yourself around so the legs are going up the wall. Try and just have a moment here to relax. So hands might want to come out to a T shape, you could have them overhead, you could have them in a cactus, just try and find what works for you in your arms. I think for me today, yep, it's a T <laughs> with my palms facing down. As you're inverted here, try and just once again drop back down into the body, out of the head and the racing thoughts are potentially in your mind like they're in mine. But let's just use this as another little reminder and little hook for us to see if we can come back into our body. Okay, we're going to come into that figure four. So we're going to bend slightly through the left and um, bring our right leg over into a figure four position, flexing through that right foot. Now your seat may ra rise up as you do that and it also might remain a little raised as you're in this figure four. That's okay. You do want to have a nice generous bend in the left leg but you want that the sole of that foot quite heavily resting against the wall. You might find that that's not enough. If it's not enough for you, just start to bring that left foot down the wall, so more towards the floor, creating a deeper bend and a more of a stretch through your right side. You could also use the right hand to leverage that right knee out a little bit more. So I want you to choose what variation is comfortable for you. I'm actually just going to remain quite restorative. For me, I'm finding that's what will help me ground the most, but totally up to you. Something really lovely about flipping it upside down, isn't there? Beautiful. When you're ready, bring the right leg up to meet the left, extending back up to straight. All right, let's swap sides. So the left leg's gonna come over. I'm gonna settle on into that right side. Again, once again, choosing your variation. Feeling that lovely openness and space come into the left glute and hip. And again, using whatever movements you need to make sure that you're getting the right amount of sensation. Try and make sure that you're pressing into the wall through all of that right foot. So is that right toe pressing on it down into the wall? Slowly releasing back to straight legs. Take a moment here. Maybe a stretch overhead could be nice. Oh, love it. Gorgeous and slowly, and if you like me, not so gracefully, make your way out of that shape. Okay, we're going to now come into our final resting pose. So you could just do Shavasana lying back um, on your back and relaxing on down, or you could come into an inverted version of Supta Baddha Konasana uh, with me. So totally up to you. If you're coming with me, um, we're going to once again elevate the legs, but we're going to keep them in a butterfly shape. So we're going to actually make sure, you might need to actually shimmy a bit closer to the wall for this one, bringing those soles of the feet together and resting them on down until you're coming into a, 
a nice relaxing butterfly shape using the wall um, to hold you. Sometimes I find with this, and I didn't really notice this until the other day, that I actually unconsciously am flapping my legs almost like butterfly wings, and I don't know why. But that's okay, it brings a nice sensation and feeling of openness into my legs and down through the groin. So it all works. Beautiful. We're going to take a few moments here of, of silence and or quiet, quiet space to connect with that intention of grounding that we've set for this class. So choose whatever cue helps you, or perhaps it's no cue at all. So concentrating on the on the sensation of the surfaces your body is touching. Is it concentrating on that beautiful three chamber breathing, or perhaps you're visualising the colour red? Or perhaps you've got your own means of um, grounding down here. Let's have a few moments just to really allow that calm grounding sensation to work its way through our bodies and our minds. Feel the air moving around the perimeter of your body. You might even like to trace around your body as well. Bring some gentle movements into your neck or perhaps your fingers or your toes. All of a sudden, as I've said that, there's a great big gust of wind here that's making the, uh, the boards of the Queenslander house, I mean, creak and groan. So, a little reminder to <laughs> come back in, into the room and into the present moment. And as you're ready, we're going to make our way back onto a kneeling position. So, we'll probably leave the toe sit and just come back and sit on our heels. Close on down through the eyes for a moment. And a little smile of gratitude to yourself. Thank you for practicing this grounded flow with me today. I hope you've enjoyed it and that we can all take some of the feelings of calm we've cultivated off the mat with us for the rest of the day. Namaste.